We begin with the breaking news in the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made a surprise visit to Ramallah in the West Bank today, where he met with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Throughout his visit to the region, Blinken has been hearing calls from Arab nations for an immediate ceasefire, something Israel has rejected. The secretary's trip to the West Bank comes as Israeli warplanes struck a refugee camp in the Gaza Strip early this morning local time, killing at least 40 people and wounding dozens more, according to Hamas health officials. NBC News could not independently verify the number of deaths reported. Meanwhile, Hamas is claiming 60 hostages have been killed as a result of Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. A spokesperson for, Hamas, for Hamas's military wing said that the bodies of 23 hostages remain, quote, buried under rubble. According to Israel, Hamas took more than 240 hostages, 33 of them children, during its attack on October 7th. So far, four hostages have been released and one has been rescued. Joining me now, NBC News foreign correspondent Josh Letterman from Ashdod, Israel. Josh, uh, what more do we know about the secretary's surprise visit to the West Bank? Well, Jonathan, the secretary woke up in Jordan this morning, flew back to Israel where he was yesterday, and made this secret trip across uh, the border into the West Bank, uh, where he met for about an hour at the Palestinian Authority headquarters with President Mahmoud Abbas. Uh, Blinken didn't make any public comments while he was in the occupied West Bank, but we did hear some more information from the State Department about what they discussed uh, with a spokesman saying that Blinken made clear that there will be no relocation uh, of Palestinians forcibly out of the Gaza Strip. That appears to be a reference to a leaked document a few days ago from an Israeli government agency that talked about moving two million Palestinians from the Gaza Strip into Egypt, something that has provided a, and triggered a lot of condemnation, but which the Israeli government said was simply in the early discussions. Blinken also told the Palestinian Authority leader uh, that he wanted to work on ending extremist violence against Palestinians in the West Bank, which appears to be a reference to uh, Jewish settlers in the West Bank who have been committing uh, several acts of violence that have been documented uh, since this war started. And then Blinken also said uh, that the U.S. remains committed to a Palestinian state, ultimately, uh, for the Palestinians. But this was an important visit for him, because if you remember, just a few weeks ago, um, Blinken was supposed to meet uh, with, uh, the, with the Palestinian leader, along with President Biden, at that major summit in Jordan that got canceled uh, after that explosion at that hospital that Palestinians blamed uh, on Israel. And so this was really the first chance for Blinken to sit down in Ramallah with the leader of the Palestinian Authority to try to deal with some of this violence. And Josh, Secretary Blinken has called for humanitarian pause throughout his visit to the region, but Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has said no. What's the Prime Minister's explanation? Well, his argument is, look, in a war, you try to build up momentum against your enemy, and that that is exactly what Israel has been doing, and that there's no reason strategically uh, to have any kind of a pause in the fighting. And I spoke uh, with the uh, a senior lawmaker from Netanyahu's Likud party, former Israeli ambassador to the uh, United Nations, Danny Danone, about all of these calls from the U.S. for a pause. Take a listen to what he had to say. Is the U.S. putting too much public pressure on Israel and what it should and shouldn't do? You know, we respect uh, our allies, but at the end of the day, we are fighting for our lives. We are fighting against evil, and we understand that it's going to be long, painful, and we have to go all the way. So we cannot stop in the middle. And Jonathan, despite the fact that Netanyahu and his allies, like Ambassador Danone, have made clear they don't foresee any pauses in the fighting, U.S. officials do still believe that there is some room for negotiation, for encouraging Israel on that front. In fact, President Biden was asked by a reporter last night while he was in Delaware whether he was making any progress in securing this humanitarian pause that the U.S. wants to see. The president said he is making progress. Jonathan?